Now to the papers, as ever the front pages, that uh, very sad Alex Ferguson news arrived late. And one of the big questions today is how ra radically did editors tear up their papers and remake them? There's the front of the Sunday Mirror, Man New Legend, Fergie Fights for Life. The Sun is the most dramatic of all of them, Fergie Fights for Life again there. And the Mail has not got that story on the front page, it's got a story about Javid, uh, Sajid Javid's uncles and a visa scandal, a lot more to be talking about there. Uh, the Sunday Times knife crime epidemic hits the shires. They know where their readers are. And one of the many papers with uh, Prince Louis on the front page, pictures released by the palace yesterday. And again, Prince Louis on the front page of the Sunday Telegraph. But a big Brexit, sorry, Brexiteers threaten May with open revolts and menacing phrases there. But of course, from anonymous Brexiteers as ever. And finally, The Observer, you were hearing about that Trump and Iran story, a really interesting dirty trick story The Observer's got. Very interesting there. So we're going to start, of course, with Alex Ferguson. Kay. Yeah, we are. Very good morning to you, Andrew. Thank good you morning. for having me along. My first time on the show. Um, while we were all out yesterday in the sunshine enjoying the, the first uh, mm. flush of spring, um, Alex Ferguson's family were gathered around his bedside. He was uh, rushed to hospital at 9 o'clock yesterday mm. morning. Uh, as you said, it's quite early for a lot of the uh, papers, the story, but uh, late, I should say. But there's six pages in the sun. They have certainly uh, done their readers pride uh, on the back page as well but let me just show you the front page there you go Fergie fights for life um, he's been put in an induced coma mm. they don't quite know yet or we certainly don't That's know uh, regular, what yeah. uh, what has happened he's in a very serious condition uh, lots of people have been tweeting at uh, their support as you can imagine I, I don't know if I can just get the iPad out and pop it here so that you can see it um, including Ozil many of the other uh, players as well. I don't know where it's gone, so we'll just ignore that. But uh, uh, people like uh, Wayne Rooney has said, uh, mm. you know, <clears> good <throat> luck, boss. We've got our thoughts uh, with you at this incredibly difficult time. He is, without question, I think, probably, you said you didn't know a lot about football. He is, without question, he knows about the football. most <laughs> successful <Assume> football <laughs> manager <laughs> ever. Oh. Um, and um, he won the treble in 1999, which is uh, when he was actually knighted as well. His wife, Cathy, and Alex I've met many times before. Yes. He's an incredibly charming man. I, I've been lucky Thoughts enough to meet prayers. him as well, and he's a very, very brave guy with a huge amount of gumption and drive, which he's going to need over the next few weeks, I would imagine, because assuming that all has gone well, he'll have weeks and weeks and weeks of being monitored very closely. Fantastic physiotherapy, which is something that he's always imposed on his own footballers. Yeah. He's now going to have to do it himself. And if he's got the, the courage and the drive, which I'm sure he has to do it, he can make a very, very good recovery these days. Yeah. But, but he's speaking become... from experience, yeah. I'm yeah. speaking from experience, yeah. He's yeah. such an interesting character because he's, he's, a, he's a cult, not just beyond sport, he is this icon. And whether you're in business or whether you're in politics, he is held up as the, as the model of leadership that he you is. aspire he's, to. He's just extraordinary. And the thing is, one of the things we love about him is he's not like so many footballers. He actually loves his wife. He hasn't cheated yes. on his wife. He's still he with stays, his wife. He's still yeah. with his wife. Yeah. And, you know, he's just, he's, yeah. just, he's like I can all, another, another generation, yeah, isn't he? Yeah, absolutely. Let me just read this um, uh, tweet that I can't find on the iPad, but it is in many of the papers as well. The procedure has gone very well, says Manchester United, but he does need a period of intense care to recover. So there is mm. some cause for optimism there. Yeah, that, that doesn't sound too bad, actually. Very well is good. Amanda, let's move on to <laughs> politics. Right, on to and politics. And this very interesting splash in the Sunday Telegraph. This is a, a long-running argument in Cabinet. Increasing on in the front pages it's, of the papers too. No, it's it, it, of course there was huge pressure after the meeting in the cabinet this week. Um, Theresa May is, um, you know, torn between you know rock and a hard place, but the hardest place are the Brexiteers who are saying no customs union, no deal, no third way because that's what they're talking about now. And this again, it's talking about you know a hybrid proposal. Um, it's talking about a. Um, a maximum facilitation plan. The jargon and is impenetrable. What does that mean? <laughs> it, what, no, mean? That all you have to know is what they are saying, the guys from, and I'm not going to name any of the people that I speak to, but obviously in the cabinet they say, no, no customs union, start and end of the story. But, you know, we've got all of these, these machinations, which I think are going to go on for... And, for uh, I think with some of the Tory rebels, particularly, I mean, in the Lords, they think they have enough uh, rebels, but in the Commons, people like Anna Soubry and Nicky Morgan have been 
quite um, restrained about crossing the line and voting with Labour, let's say, to defeat the government. But on this customs union, it's such a big issue. Mm. I think the Conservatives well, would face... I think she has a high chance of facing defeat we're, we're on this. Told, well, we're told that the Chief Whip has told Theresa May that she can't win this vote in the House of Commons at the moment. Yeah. It might have to be delayed. No, I'm, I'm sure that's true. That's I, why this battle is so fierce at the moment, and that's why you've got all these briefings. And from the conversations I have with people in the Cabinet, this is coming from the top of yeah. And the back benches as well. Yeah. I interviewed Jacob Rees-Mogg at the weekend for my program on Sky, and he. Don't um, you love him? I, you know, I, I, I <laughs> oh, went with a Are preconceived a idea <laughs> of what he was going to be like, and he was incredibly charming. Can I just charming. say he is he like is. something that Time Team have dug up? <laughs> I said he <laughs> he's was so old. Yeah, I mean, so he's often referred to as the uh, minister for the 18th century, and he said, "I'm certainly not that modern." <laughs> so you know, you had a good one liner for everything. But he left me in no doubt that if Theresa May does not fulfil her promises he is likely to um, stab her in the front as well as the back. But, yeah. Kate, yeah. is this, is this yeah. not an empty threat in the end? Because if Theresa May is forced out in some kind of cabinet coup, what then happens to Brexit? I mean, the whole thing could collapse at that point. Surely. Andrew, it, but it's, it's so... Uh, this is, we've never had a situation like this before. You've got members who have fought their entire political career in the Tory party to get out of Europe. You know, you, you can't underestimate how strongly they feel about this and how people are prepared to actually, you know, put their careers on the line to stop her. But because I think the same is true on the, other, on, the, on the other side as well. What's so interesting is, I mean, look, the Labour Party's got big issues with this as well, but for the Conservative Party, Europe has dominated. It's been at the, the battle at the heart of the Conservative Party. It has brought down Conservative Prime Ministers, and who knows where this customs union thing is going to take us. I was us. going to try to explain the two options on the table. Do. We've only got to several hours. No, <laughs> I, I, I don't I don't that. I'll, I'll do. get on to that later on. We'll get on to that later on. Let's Be keep moving. Before you go on to Alicia, there's there's a fantastic cartoon in the um, Telegraph, Telegraph today. Because you're going to talk about the local elections. Yeah. It's just great. I just want someone to take them away. So there's a little old lady, and they're two bins, one with Corbyn and one with Theresa May. I bought twas ever, though. Was, <laughs> yes. I mean, that's the view yeah. with politics. Local I feel elections. that could be Brenda from Bristol, that woman <laughs> yeah. there, basically. Um, yeah, so I, I picked out a story from The Observer um, doing a roundup of the, the local elections. Now, I mean, I would have liked Labour to have done better outside London, but I think some of the coverage writing off Jeremy Corbyn, saying it's all over for Labour, is absolute nonsense. I just want to remind people that local elections are very, very different from general elections. A general election, you get more visibility of the issues, and yeah. um, the policy issues come to the fore, and of course the leaders get mm. a lot more attention, and young people come out to vote at the general election. And I think what we saw um, from this snapshot on Thursday night was that Britain is in political deadlock still. Neither party would it's get an overall um, Though, majority. On these results, am I not right in saying that Labour would be the largest party in Parliament if they were replicated in a general election? Correct. That was the John M. Curtis um, extrapolation. But a local election's not a little bit like by-elections in that people see it as an opportunity to give whoever's in power a bloody nose, and actually they won't necessarily vote in the same way when it comes to a general election. And I think this, this local set of local elections were quite interesting as well. There were lots of local issues. For example, in Barnet, the anti-Semitism scandal really, was yeah, huge. Yeah. Yeah. And Labour but I'm afraid correctly lost that council because of anti-Semitism. But another case I just want to highlight, in Pendle, the Conservatives gained a, a council because of a very nasty thing. They reinstated a council who made a disgusting racist joke, which frankly would have put the BNP she, she, to, she was, to shame. She was sharing it, but it is unbearably bad. It's yeah. the kind of thing that cannot even be alluded to in general terms on family television Absolutely. Programs. And I think, you know, we have got to tackle racism and anti-Semitism in all in all walks of public life across all mm -hmm. different parties. So I just wanted to make the point that um, I think all the uh, predictions that it's game over for Corbyn are premature. Just remember in the 2017 general election campaign, Corbyn went into that election 24 points behind and everybody wrote him off and he did a lot better. So I think so it's, it's yeah. wrong to write. It's all about the yeah. young voters, now, isn't it? One of the points of this paper review is to remind people of all the stories that are not actually in the, in the TV headlines but are still very important. And Kay, the front page of the Sunday Times has a knife. We've been talking about knife crime in London. Yeah. Now it seems to the knife Need crime epidemic. Glasses on this one. I can't read the spreads, small print. Um, spreads well beyond London. Yeah, I mean, we, and we heard what Trump said, didn't we, um, about a, a London hospital being like a, a war zone he was certainly um, talking about what what a doctor had said but he replicated that in, in a speech but it would transpire that apparently it's not the cities that we need to worry about and you are more likely to suffer of, be a victim of knife attack in Bedfordshire than you are on Merseyside 
which to me seems almost unbelievable. Why is that? Apparently, it's because the drug barons are trying to find new markets in the shires. Yeah. Kay, you're quite good at this kind of stuff on, on live television. You're relatively fluent and pretty good. <laughs> I read that you have done more live television, apart from your gong, congratulations. Thank you. Uh, apart yeah. from the gong, you have done more live television than any other woman, woman in Britain or the world. Uh, I've on presented... earth. <laughs> 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 I've presented more live telly than anyone else in the world. I've done more than wow. a million minutes of live telly. Yeah. And what is your conclusion from more than a million minutes of uh, live television? We'd love to know. Without question, to date, is the epitome of my career. So Correct answer. Answer. This is the high Correct point. Answer. This is the high point. Yeah. Fantastic. Let's move on to, to Megan, shall we? Um, uh, Megan Markle. Yeah. Because she has she's... not yet given... We're talking about live television. She yeah. has not yet given the live TV interview, which she's going to give a live TV interview with Oprah Winfrey. Her, her mother is. Isn't yeah, her, her mother. Her yeah. mother um, um, Oprah Winfrey has nabbed her in the, her palatial home for the whole weekend. Got six hours of interviews on tape. Um, talking about how all the abuse that she suffered, uh, Megan suffered, since it was announced that she was marrying. Um, Her mother suffered a lot of abuse. When she, she did. Yeah, all, all when the... they got married, yes. when, they, when she first married uh, Megan's father, yeah. um, she was often seen by the many of the people in this mostly white uh, yeah. neighbourhood that they lived in. As she was seen as the maid. So they, did, they couldn't comprehend that a, a woman of colour could possibly have this child. So she well, made maid. no more. Oh, yeah. Well, um, exactly. And I think one of the things that's so amazing about this uh, union is, look, the, the, the British royal family is at the pinnacle of the class system. They are the absolute representation mm -hmm. of the elite of the elite. And to have a person of colour join that, I think, is an incredibly important and powerful moment for, and for this isn't country. Isn't it fantastic that a dad's going to walk her down the aisle? Yeah. Yeah. And I don't think he's been out of his little hut in wherever he lives now. He's a bit of a recluse, but he's been, you know... Well, I did feel sorry for him because and... he's gone out to buy his wedding suit and they've been getting I pictures know, of him. I know, I know. And and he's, he's, he's quite, he's quite <laughs> big, isn't he? He's quite big. <laughs> yeah. Let's talk about all those baby Cross pictures. This is a kind of <laughs> British <laughs> ritual. Um, the, 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 the official baby there pictures are released and everybody... <laughs> goes cool. Yeah, he is a very beautiful baby. He is eight and a half pounds. He's, He's a, a very healthy weight, shall we say. Yeah. He's a health. But this is a hand-me-down outfit from Charlotte when she, uh, that her first ever photo call. So mum's popped him in the same. Well, these, these are pictures that are I taken by Aus Kate. Austerity coming to, uh, but I love the fact that, <laughs> Ke that, that Kate was <laughs> literally, <laughs> uh, in fact, I think Kate had to hold off giving birth until <laughs> Kate was back in the country. I wanted Kate to be cutting the umbilical cord. I thought that actually Actually, would have been a fitting moment for the um, for That's the royal birth. That is a very very attractive <laughs> moment. End of this fascinating paper review. On thanks to thanks to all of you, and so to the.